The town of Kanchanaburi is 128 kilometers northwest of Bangkok, en route to the Burmese border, a serene antidote to the bedlam of the capital, and also home to a rather unusual and controversial Buddhist sanctuary. It's generally known as the Tiger Temple, run by monks and staffed by trained vets and 200 locals. The story goes one injured tiger was brought to this temple in 1999 and since then others have been delivered here for their own safety. Now there are nearly a hundred. So now you are in the Tiger Island. Tiger Island is the point of view is rescue research and education center. Originally 200 hectares, the aim is to complete work on a 2,000 hectare wildlife project. Already wild boars, deer, cattle, horses and peacocks roam around. She's very dirty. She's very dirty, but that doesn't matter. She's hungry. The cubs are, of course, cute. But as you might have guessed, the Tiger Temple has its critics. For a start, once born and domesticated here, tigers like this can't be returned to the natural wild. Tiger must and should be in the wild, mm. but where now at this moment? We talk a uh, tangible project, we not talk about on the paper. Sure. Where is paradise for the tiger now? But there are more damaging allegations. Four years ago, a much publicized report by the animal welfare group Care for the Wild International claimed the tigers were abused drugged, had urine sprayed in their faces, and have also been traded. Well, there's no doubt the animals are docile, even lethargic, but that's because they're well-fed, content, and by the afternoon, rather sleepy, says the doctor. Tell me why some wildlife charities and some tour operators and guidebooks say you shouldn't come here. Why, why do you think they say that? I think because they're not deep inside with us. You you see, we have international volunteer, we have international staff now, so now the digital world, you cannot uh, hide anything else. Mm. 13 years I'm a vet, it's not easy to blow that the tiger with tranquilizer, it's not easy, mm. okay, mm. but 100% no drug. Yeah. 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 Well, we, now I've never done this before, obviously. <laughs> I'm giving the tiger a bath. You massage, massage. <laughs> I'm massaging the tiger. Massage the tiger. Classic. Tiger massage. I cannot believe <laughs> I am this close to a tiger, and this tiger is not small. From the outside, this temple looks like a highly efficient money machine. It sets you back $10 to get in, and again to get a photo of you walking with a tiger, or having a tiger in your lap. They do seem incredibly docile now. But the owners insist this is a not-for-profit organization, and certainly not money-grabbing. We spend at least 500,000 baht per week just to really tiger food. Ultimately, the temple says it's the Buddhist belief system, in reincarnation especially, which divides them from Western wildlife experts. So, what to make of this? Temple? Or sanctuary? Or circus? It's certainly very business savvy here. Tourists pay for every single privilege of being near a tiger, photographing them, touching them, and whatever else. But as for maltreatment goes, well, I've got no evidence for that, although I'm no scientist. Ultimately, though, it's probably the strangest place of worship I've ever been to. Heading towards Kanchanaburi and ever closer to Burma is Thakramsay Station. Young travellers bask in the sunshine and riverside scenery. But this is a pretty stop-off on a rail line with a grim history. It lies in a stretch of the 424 kilometer so-called Death Railway, constructed during the Second World War to fulfill Imperial Japan's ambitions of conquering and connecting the whole of Asia. To that end, 
60,000 Dutch, British and Australian prisoners of war and three times as many indentured Asian labourers were drafted in to build it. Every year, three million people visit Kanchanaburi to see this bridge, made famous by the film version of a novel. Some say the real meaning of the bridge has been buried under layers of commercialism and tacky souvenirs. Almost all of the original bridge over the River Kwai was destroyed by Allied forces towards the end of the Second World War. So largely what you see here is reconstruction. But that doesn't stop it from becoming one glorified photo opportunity for tourists. Thirteen thousand prisoners of war and an estimated eighty thousand Asians died. Some seven thousand graves of POWs were relocated here to a more appropriate resting place. Many visitors have close personal connections to the victims. I came here because um, my father was a prisoner of war here, during, obviously during the war, and, and worked on the railway. Yeah. So we just wanted to be where he was. That it helps, you know what I mean? Because, you know, it just keeps everything going. It's only just in the last year or two that we are now having some Asian families coming here. And it's this generational thing. The children never questioned. The grandchildren are questioning. So we have Asian grandchildren coming here knowing that there's a grandfather somewhere. And the really sad thing is we can't help any of them because we have no information. With the prisoners of war here, we can tell you where every one of these men died, what they died of. With the Asians, not a one. Rod Beatty designed this museum as a tribute to the prisoners of war. Some 70 years after the construction of the Death Railway, the idea to unite Southeast Asia has re-emerged, albeit without brutal imperialism at its core. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, is set to unify economic markets in 2015 and that could have significant benefits for travellers with visas and in crossing borders as well as infrastructure. But it's the entry of an as yet uncommercialised, relatively undiscovered and as yet less materialistic Burma that could be the wake-up call to those who think Thailand has a monopoly on the exotic Southeast Asian brand. As Burma comes out of the political wilderness, train links with Thailand are bound to improve. But let's hope that those who gave their lives being forced to build this first attempt to link the two countries by rail won't be forgotten. My travels through Thailand have shown me that this may be the land of smiles, but it's also the land of some very shrewd thinking. Everyone from Mr. Thailand to the tourist authority and even some members of the Buddhist community have a sharp awareness of how to cash in on Thailand's undeniable appeal. There's no doubt that this is one of the most vibrant and colourful countries in Asia, with a liberal attitude to life and a rich tradition of hospitality. Let's just hope that in its quest to develop and be all things to all people, it doesn't lose what makes it unique. Because that would be too big a price to pay for this remarkable country. Mm -hmm.